we are back on the Brittany Rossi show with another amazing guest, Miss Debbie Cromack. And she is here with me. And I just have to tell you, I feel like she's one of the most energetic guests that I've had on the <laughs> podcast um, as to date. And so I've done some work with her previously, and I'm so excited to share her with you guys because I know that she has a lot to contribute and also her energy is just contagious. So let me do a quick introduction to who she is. And as you guys know, I will turn a lot of this time over to her to share her insight and knowledge. But first, let me tell you about Debbie. She was a former corporate lackey uh, turned entrepreneur renegade, and I love that. Um, she is an international best-selling author, and she's a business coach. She um, loves empowering introverted female entrepreneurs, and I will raise my hand because I am an introvert I am <laughs> right here, to set up the foundation of a coaching business. And she helps them implement a replicable sales process that really feels good to them and replace their corporate income so that they can thrive in their business, quit that corporate job, and fall in love with their life every single day. And so if you're done being an employee, you are going to want to hear from this gal. Um, and so she would be a, the coach for you because she knows that nine to five life. And so I want to let her tell us a little bit about her business in her own words, um, a little bit about like why she's so passionate about this. And then um, we will continue to dig in. So Debbie, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yay, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Um, yeah, from the moment we started, you know, the moment we connected, just like our energy was so good. And I just love what you're about. I love what you're doing. I love the message that you're sending out to the world. And I was just like, I'm so excited. And I knew, I was like, we have to do a collaboration. We've got to do something just because, like, I think, you know, when you're in that energetic vibe with someone and it's just so good, you, you just, you want to do more of it. You know what I mean? So I'm so excited to be here. Um, yeah. So I'll back up a little bit. I mean, I was in corporate 25 plus years, 19 at my last job. And I was at, you know, a big name company, like one of the fortune 100s and not for nothing. It was look, it was great for me. It helped me be very independent. I bought my first house all by myself. Um, and I had many, many good years in corporate and the last like five to six years I was there, it really changed a lot. The environment changed a lot. Um, my role changed a lot. Um, so kind of my strengths and weaknesses stayed the same and then the role changed around me. So I wasn't even really necessarily all that good anymore at what I was doing. And so, I mean, that was kind of a stressful thing, right? To be doing that every day. Yes. For 10, 12, 14 hours a day. You know what I mean? And really having no life. Um, and the reason I kind of stayed with the people, because I'm obviously very much a people person. And, you know, and there was also the stigma, right? You have 401k, pension, benefits, you're making over six figures. Who in their right mind would leave something like this? Right. I would raise my hand. <laughs> I chose to leave. So back in 2012, I started having panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And it didn't like, you know, unless you really like had one of the, you know, clinically diagnosed kind, you have no idea what's happening to you. Like I thought I was dying and I happened to be on an airplane and I was like, this is it. I'm going to my death. I don't know what's happening to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I... You know, that kind of carried on for a couple of years, figured out it was stress and all this kind of stuff. And um, through that five to six years where I really, really struggled, I knew there was more for me. And I was like, this cannot be what my life is supposed to be about. Like, I am stressed out every day, all the time. I'm unhappy. I, I probably cried every other day, every two days. I mean, you know, I look, I, I don't think I was ever at a point of clinical depression. I just knew I was stressed out. I was unhappy. And I was like, there's got to be more. And I always knew that I loved helping people. Mm. And, you know, so I kind of toiled and, you know, sort of stumbled in the online space and I started my business. And my, the first, the first thing when I started was I want to empower women everywhere. 
Like that was my niche. <laughs> I was like, hmm, okay, great, beautiful, but obviously we know way too broad. Like, you know, you just can't do that. So I kind of started my business as I was still working in my corporate job. What many people call a side hustle, I call it the straddle because, you know, you kind of have one foot here like and that. one foot here. And, you know, you're, you're trying to keep your head above water doing both, right? Obviously trying to get the business up and running. Because for me, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. So uh, <coughs> one of many, many times sobbing on the bathroom floor, I had a situation occur in my job that was extremely stressful and um, turned, initially everybody thought I did something wrong. It was a template from the finance person. There were errors on the template. They didn't know there were errors until they kind of came to me and they were like, your stuff is wrong. And I was like, I don't know what to tell you. My stuff's not wrong. It looks wrong because of the template. Anyway, we found out that there were errors on this template. Now, I had spent hours upon hours upon hours on this particular project. Okay. And, you know, then come to find out like it's, I'm sort of being blamed, kind of, you know what I mean? Uh, well, at least finger pointed, like you have to go fix your work. It's wrong. It's bad. Um, come to find out that it wasn't my fault at all. Landed me on the bathroom floor. And I was sobbing so stinking hard and my body was shaking and there was no actual sound coming out of my, my mouth because it was one of those like almost wailing cries that like nothing's coming out. And I ended up breaking blood vessels around my eye sockets because they like my eyes were closed so tightly as I was crying. And I mean, I, 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 I mean, it was ugly cry for probably, you know, 15 minutes. It was just bad. Mm -hmm. And, and I kind of collected myself. I scraped myself up off the floor and I, I like, I looked in the mirror and I, I was like, no, this cannot be it. You know? And I was probably, I think I was like 43 at the time. Mm -hmm. And I just knew that I couldn't do it any longer. And so I really stepped it up in my business. And I was like, I've got to figure this out. Not only do I have to figure this out for me, because I'm going to die. Like if I stay here, uh, I'm looking at an early death. And I've seen it around me at my company where people were having heart attacks and on anti-anxiety medications. And so I was just kind of like, I'm, I'm headed there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. not life to me. Right. So at that moment, I said, I'm going to fix this for me. And I'm going to be the person to reach my hand out to that woman on her bathroom floor and say, come on, girl, I got you. Let's go. We're going to figure this out. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I came to be where I am and why I really chose to work with those female nine to fivers who want to transition out because I feel that pain. I feel that pain in my heart. I know it. It's still so clear to me. And I don't think anyone should have to live with that kind of stress and pressure and unhappiness and living only to work and not even having a life. So here I am. And, and you know, and a lot of what I learned um, and a lot of why I'm a business coach who focuses on empowerment and mindset is because typically, typically, the path that led us to even go to corporate was a path where our worth and our value came from external sources, mm -hmm. right? We don't know this. We just know we know how to do what we know how to do to be successful and earn six figures in a big company, right? right. That's right. where our like articulated, like, and this is why I'm successful at this. It's just, you know, I, I am successful at this. And this right. And, and we don't know. So we come into this online space thinking, right, I work for a Fortune 100 company. I have my MBA. I'm a smart person. I can totally figure this out. Right. When it's more than just figuring it out, right? It's more than just systems and funnels and strategies. Mindset. It's, it's mindset. And I will tell you, like, I, okay, in corporate, like I knew the word empowerment, obviously we've all heard it, but I have to say, I didn't necessarily know mindset and I didn't really quite get it until I really started digging in and going, this is it. And this is why 
so many women struggle as we try to make the transition because we don't know that. Like when I first started, I, I called myself a mindset and empowerment coach. The, we didn't, we don't know that's what we need. Right? right. So finally, hello, you know, it dawned on me. They're looking for a business coach because they don't yet understand that they, what they really need is a little help on empowerment and mindset. So I better call myself a business coach. And then what we're going to do when we work together is holy cow, 80, 85% on, you know, mindset and empowerment, because that's really where it is. And if you think about that, it's not even just for business, it's for life. Right. It's what we need in our There's life. There's so much bleed over in this, in this arena. So talk to us a little bit about some mindset obstacles that tend to come up that you see in some of your nine to five clients, but also, I mean, any entrepreneur who's shifting from employee mindset, it doesn't have to be like corporate. It could just be employee, you know, into self-employed or entrepreneur mindset. What are some common beliefs that you see come up that are kind of hard obstacles to overcome? Because a lot of the mindset that, like you said, there's this external value, this external feedback for women who are employees or corporate, you know, how yeah. do we, first of all, let's identify what some of those mindsets are and what those beliefs are. Yeah. Sense? And a lot of it, here's what I've noticed. A lot of it comes down to worthiness, mm. self-trust, right? The, the beautiful self-sabotage friend of I'm not good enough, right? All of them kind of connected, but also yet a little bit different, right? Because I, I, I find that what we tend to do, and this is very, very interesting with the personality type that's going from that corporate job into the online business, right? Where we're, we're very, very confident in, in the work that we do in our corporate jobs. We've been doing it for a long time. We know exactly what to do. Tell me what, what I'm supposed to do and I'll go do it, right? I'm a worker bee. I'm going to go implement it, right? So there's that I'm an employee. I know what to do, okay? You're giving me step one, step two, step three. I'm going to go carry that out. That's what we know how to do. We come into this online space. Suddenly we're our own boss and we're like, no idea. <laughs> what? Well, what do I do? What's the, where's, hello, can somebody give me step one? I'll implement it, but I, I just need to tell me, tell me what step one is, right? And there really is no step one. There's no actual, like, there's no buddy telling you, here's what you need to go implement. You've got to figure it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden what happens is this, this rush almost of like, loss of identity, loss of confidence. I have no idea what I'm doing. Right? And so then what do we end up doing? Well, look, I'm accomplished. I know how to learn. I'm very book smart. I'm going to go learn. And then we start consuming. Yep. I'm going to take this course and listen to that webinar. And I'm just going to start taking all this stuff in because we're discounting the stuff that we already know. The yeah, stuff that we already have inside us, the life experience, the possible certifications in some cases, right? Yeah. And we start to, to feed into, well, I'm not good enough. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have to go learn it all. A funny story about that is I was chatting with a gal one time and she had her PhD and she said, I have no experience. And I said, girl, like you have a PhD in this thing and like you are totally capable of doing X, Y, and Z. And yet she had to receive, like as a student, like a professional student for so many years, had to pivot in this mindset and had totally discounted the things that were innate and natural to her and even certifications that she had earned. Like, I, it's just, it's wild. And it, it doesn't just happen with think, people who don't have certifications, like people with PhDs are also struggling with, with this thing, yeah. right? It, it's prevalent, absolutely prevalent. And I wanted to ask you too, can you talk a little bit about self-trust? Because that might be a term that not everyone is super familiar with. So what is it that you mean by self-trust? Yeah. And I, I, I think, what, you know, I, and it kind of goes nicely with what you just talked about, right? She's not even trusting that that young lady was not even trusting in what she already had. Mm -hmm. She's mistrusting because she's seeing all this stuff around her, right? Almost that comparisonitis of, well, look at all these people and they're already doing this and they're doing it so well. And, you know, do, am I really good enough? Am I, because again, I think they're so connected. The, the worthiness, the self-trust and the good enough, they're all so connected. And I think it's this point of 
where we almost we're, we're doubting ourselves we're second guessing ourselves we're not trusting that what we know can help someone else and a lot of times where i end up going with my clients on this is they always feel like and we i should even say we because i i was totally this way in the beginning right Thanks. where I've got to be 10 steps ahead of this person in order to charge the kind of money I want to charge. Mm -hmm. right? right. Instead of thinking, well, wait a minute. What if you are only two steps ahead of that person? Cause look, we're never going to know why by measurement standards, how far ahead of we are of somebody. Right. But think about the person that you can help that that's just two steps behind you. Can you help them? Yes. I, of course I can help them. Okay then you must trust in the fact that, that you can help them and that you are absolutely worth what you're going to charge them. And here's an interesting thing that came up for one of my clients. And she says, you know, well, what if suddenly I realized I am 10 steps ahead of them and not just two steps? I said, okay, great. Or when you come to that realization, are you suddenly then going to say, oh, wait a minute, I really should charge them 10 times more because I'm 10 steps ahead. No, we're not going to do that. Right. Our price is our price. All we need to do is know in our heart with integrity that we can truly help this person and, and also know that if they happen to not recognize that they're five steps ahead of us and we truly can help them, that we say, I may not be the person for you, right? Like definitely self-awareness, but I think there's a, there's a level of trust that we have to kind of say, but wait a minute, I do know enough. I trust myself that with everything, right? Life experience, certification, you know, all, all the things that we already know innately, all the things that we've been through, the struggles that we've come through, the fact that we've come out on the other end totally qualifies us to be able to help that person who's just two steps behind us. Absolutely. I totally agree. And so if someone is in this place and they're recognizing this as a issue in them. They're like, oh man, I really, I really do have things to contribute. I really can help somebody a handful of steps behind me. What does it look like in the process? I mean, it's all well and good to say like, okay, yeah, I, I do um, deserve this amount of money or I am worth this, but you know, there are days where doubt creeps in. And so oh, yeah. what does it look like to really not just you know, cause it can kind of feel like you're feeding yourself a lie, especially at the beginning where you're like, yeah. okay, yeah, maybe I really am worth X amount of dollars. And then someone gets on the phone with you and they're like, oh, you're too expensive. Right. Yeah. So that can knock, you know, the wind out of your sails a little bit. Huge. How do we, um, as entrepreneurs, especially women who are newer to this, how do we work on this mindset and really not just tell ourselves this new truth, but like really buy into it, like really believe it. Yep. And, and but you just use the word, believe it. That is what it comes down to because, and I, and, and I, I always tell my, you know, my ladies in my Facebook group or my clients I work with, I am not a fake it till you make it kind of person because I do feel like it's a lie. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of times as we're doing, and then look, it all comes down to the mindset work. Here's the thing about mindset work. I want you to think about it like, like exercise, right? If we suddenly realize mm, not feeling so healthy, right. And we think, okay, I'm going to get back to the gym. Going to the gym for a week is not going to do anything. Going to the gym has to be a lifestyle change, right? It has to be something that you do with frequency and consistency over and over again, right? It's continual practice, right? Think about, think about sports players, right? They, I mean, basketball players, right? They, they, don't, they don't even know where the ball is in their hand anymore because it's just a part of their body at that point because they practice for so many hours. This is what we want to do with mindset work. You don't just journal on something for a week and suddenly oh, everything's fixed, right? <laughs> it's doing that mindset work with practice, with consistency. And like, there's many different kinds that work for, for different people. You want to find one that feels good for you because it's all about the feeling. It's all about the belief. It's all about the knowing deep inside that, heck yes, I am good, right? And it's about fueling that mindset. Um, and you know, I, I think it's, I mean, it's so important to recognize that because we don't want to lie to ourselves because that just feels totally disingenuous. So a lot of times what I like to say is capable, right? If you're struggling with something and it's not feeling true to you, but you want for it to be true to you, insert the word capable. I am capable of building a successful, profitable business. 
Because in the beginning, we probably don't yet have a successful, profitable business. But we sure as heck know that we are absolutely capable of creating it, right? Absolutely. We may need a little help. We may need a little guidance. We may want a coach. We may you know, want a virtual assistant at some point, right? A, a team of support. We, do, we, need to know, we know we need to do the mindset work, right? So we know we're capable of. So I think that really is helpful in, in kind of getting past that, like, well, I don't want to lie to myself. No, because then it doesn't feel good. It's not going to work anyway, mm -hmm. right? But if we know in our heart the things that we are absolutely capable of, I think that kind of helps with things. And, you know, putting ourselves in that space and really owning that belief in, look, if I can make certain things happen in my life, and I've done well for myself, and I've been able to get success in the corporate arena, I know I can figure this out because I'm smart, right? I know what I know, and I know with great conviction, I have, I have a post all about conviction, but having that knowing, that conviction in your heart that, yes, I can help these people, I can truly help them, and keeping that belief and keeping that feeling, that's what ultimately is what wins, right? Because, and if you think about mindset work, we all have the stories. We all have the stories, right? Somebody said something to us when we were young, a parent, a, somebody, an authority figure, right? A teacher, an older sibling, maybe a younger sibling, you never know. Um, but someone said something that implanted in us and we've held on to as our truth. It's true. Now that we're older and now that we're more aware, awareness is the first pillar of my coaching business because I think we can't do anything until we're aware of it, right? We can't make any changes until we're aware that like, hmm, a change needs to be made. So once we get older and we can kind of be aware of and recognize and go, hmm, is it really that I'm not good enough? Maybe I need to do something about this, right? Then we can start to, and I know it sounds like a little woo-woo or a little fruity, that you know, reprogramming the mindset, but it is so scientifically based that we can actually change those, you know, um, the the uh, well, the neuro, not, neuro. What are they called? I'm having a brain fart. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right. We can actually physically change those by basically saying, "Wait a minute, that is not my truth." Recognizing it, accepting it, totally stinks that somebody told us that at some point, but right. If I continue to believe in that, I'll never go forward anyway. So what if I change my belief and said, hmm, I am totally worthy. I am totally capable. I am going to figure this out. And we decide, and then we feed our brain with that decision because our brain doesn't know the difference. It only knows what we tell it. That's right. So it held on to what we, we were told and we, we continued to tell it before. Now we're saying, hold on, that's not, that's not entirely true. This over here is what's true, and this is over here is what I'm making to become my truth, right? So once we start feeding that, then the brain goes, oh, okay, let me look for more of that. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's why I say we need to do the practice because we've got to do it over and over. Because it took how many years? It took us how many years to get to this distorted place of a mindset that doesn't serve us? It's gonna take some time to kind of change things around, you know what I mean? Absolutely. I I love that you said that. And, you know, that's a huge part of like, it's, it's really the foundation of running the business. Like you can have a great program, but if you are in this emotional and mental roller coaster, I mean, that's really going to throw off a lot in your business. It's going to contribute to how you market that stuff comes through in non-tangibles. And so, you know, if you are not showing up confident one day, like, and you don't believe in yourself, you don't believe in your product. I mean, why should somebody else believe in you and your product? Like it just, it comes out and it's hard to hide that or put on a persona. Um, and so my question to you, for those who are listening, can you share a little bit about what your mindset practice looks like? And I can share a little bit of what mine looks like so they can kind of hear some examples and maybe get started, you know, thinking about this a little bit. Yeah. So uh, what I like to do for myself is I kind of sprinkle it in throughout the day mm -hmm. just to sort of give myself a little boost here and there. So <clears throat> I always start in the morning. For me, it starts in the morning. I, I get up and I go to the gym in the morning and I kind of start doing some on my way to the gym. And I do some positive affirmations. I pray. Um, and I have, I, I actually created, I, I now have it as a product because I felt like, well, why should I keep this to myself? 
but I created something called the release and focus exercise where I kind of walk myself through releasing the things that do not serve me and I don't want to reside inside me anymore so that I can open myself up to receive and focus on all the things that I do want. Um, so I kind of do that in the morning and then um, around lunchtime ish before I go out and snuggle with my baby goats, <laughs> I, do, I do like a 15 minute meditation, just a quick 15 meditation. Oh my goodness. And there are so many out there. You can, you can find so many, find one that's 10 minutes, 15 minutes that it doesn't have to take a lot of time. Right. But it's something you can just kind of work in your day. And then around three o'clock, um, I do some journaling, which again, it doesn't have to take a long time. You don't have to sit there for an hour. I do it for maybe 15 minutes and I just do some journaling and maybe, you know, maybe I'll just do stream of consciousness. Maybe I'll do one of the ones I like to do is I like to do um, five things I'm grateful for that are current and exist now and five things I'm grateful for that are coming to me that I'm creating that are a little bit like on their way to me. Um, right. Because you sit in that gratitude for the things that are already, you know, you're grateful for. And that brings that gratitude into the things that you're creating. Yeah. And then, um, at, actually at bedtime, which is if you're going to do any mindset work, if you're like Debbie, totally don't have time to be doing all that stuff because like I got a busy schedule, I can't do it. If you're going to do anything. You want to do something at night before you go to bed, because what we're doing is we're feeding our subconscious mind. And our subconscious mind, as we go to sleep at night, that's what it's holding on to, right? So whether it's you just watched a scary movie and that's what it's going to hold on to all night, right? Or you basically just spend, I don't even care if you start with five minutes and do some mindset work. Whatever your mindset work of choice is, whether you like journaling, whether you like saying your affirmations, whether you like writing your affirmations, even if it isn't in a journal, um, I, I actually use a, an app that um, they have four, either four or five free, free things. And then you can buy like the annual thing for $13 or something. It's called Think Up. Um, I can pop you over the link for it as well. I, I, and you know what I am? Um, I'm an affiliate of them. I just remember that. Um, but it's, it's like meditation music in the background. And then you get to type in statements that are your mantras, your affirmations. And then what you do is you speak them. So when you then play it at night before you go to bed, it is your voice saying your affirmations that are going into your ears, that you're hearing, that your brain is taking in. So you're basically rewriting your stories and you're feeding your mindset with your new truths and the things that you're bringing into your life and the things that you're capable of and the things that you want to draw into your life. That is the most powerful thing you could do. I love that. And I love that yours isn't just like, you know, I did this for 15 minutes in the morning and I'm done. It is a lifestyle process mm -hmm. of remapping your mind. And I think that that's really, really cool. I haven't quite heard it framed that way. And so for those of you who are listening, I hope that you're taking notes because she just gave you like a ton of golden nuggets and that you can just, and I think sometimes it can get a little overwhelming, but if you can just take one of those pieces of her practice and start implementing that today, I know that you'll start seeing shifts in how you start to perceive your work yeah. and you know this process of becoming an entrepreneur or leaving your nine to five. Um, if you are catching this video on um, YouTube or on, on my website you know, and watching it, you'll see behind me, there's like a frame on the wall. And so those are my affirmations and declarations that I also speak I that. verbally. Um, and I change them up about every 90 days depending on the season or if I've kind of really have started to embody that and own a belief for myself. And so kind of like you, I sprinkle mine throughout the day. Um, I used to start in the morning and now I do it kind of close of day because mm -hmm. I find I'm most creative in the morning. That's where all my creative juices are flowing. So yeah, it's all the creativity out. And then it's kind of like it slows down in the afternoon and I just it's this kind of more peaceful time and I'm, I'm speaking it out. I'm reminding myself of the truth, even if I don't feel it. And so um, if you don't know what a declaration or an affirmation is, and this is still kind of new to you, you know, one thing that she mentioned earlier that I still actually have up here is you can kind of feel like you're left behind when you're first getting started and you get really overwhelmed with all that there is to do. So one of my declarations and affirmations is that I do not feel left behind. I'm exactly where I need to be, right? So I speak this out and I remind myself when my to-do list is getting like, you know, longer and longer and longer. It's like, oh my goodness. 
but you know, reminding yourself of the truth about something, it can kind of feel a little fraudulent at the beginning, but the more that you do it, the more that you really, you, your mind starts to remap and you mm-hmm. do embody it and you say, you know what, this is the truth about myself. I am exactly where I need to be. I started at the right time and this is the right season for this thing. And I will be where I need to be based on my life experience, my credentials, my learning curve, everything, right? And then at the end of my work day, I do kind of a bit of a journaling and reevaluation process. So like, where did I win? What did I not accomplish? Why? What came up? So this kind of like evaluation of, did I really believe what I'm speaking to myself or Mm -hmm. am I still, you know, believing some lies somewhere and where do I need to continue digging in a little bit deeper? So those are some aspects. And then in the evening too, I am also in the morning, I have a quiet time. I like to read a non-business something. And so I usually read my Bible and I take some time to pray and meditate and just think. Um, And so that also too is feeding my mind with truth and my beliefs and my values and reminding me like, I sit, this is where I stand on, on certain things. And so that helps me carry that into everything that we do. Yeah. And so I love how you start your day and end your day. And, um, you know, it's very, it can feel a little overwhelming to get started with a mindset practice, but mm-hmm. I love that it's called a practice because there's room to like not do this every day. It's okay. You can make mistakes. You can miss a day. You just pick it up the next day, right? Yeah. The only person putting pressure on yourself is yourself to do this right? So give yourself permission to get started and to build this out to as robust of a mindset practice as you would like to have it, right? And so um, as we wrap up this idea of mindset, what are some things um, that you feel like were great support when you were starting to develop this? I know you already mentioned the app, but do you find it helpful to have an accountability partner? I know that that's something that I have utilized in the past. What are some ways that people can get support for creating a mindset practice? Yeah, I think, you know, whether it's a, like you say, an accountability partner or just a friend or, or a coach, if you happen to be working with a coach and saying, you know what, I really want to do this. You know, can you help me out? Can you, you know, check in on me, you know, once a week or something like that. I think having someone to help support you in that and remind you um, is, is key right? Because it helps you sort of stay on track. Um, And along with that, I will also bring up the word grace. um, Because I think as entrepreneurs, we are so motivated, we are so driven, we are so dedicated, we push ourselves, right? We, We set our standards way up here for ourselves. And on the occasion, we don't meet them. We, we feel guilty, we judge ourselves, we berate ourselves, right? Yeah. That is not what this is about, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I always bring up grace because and you said it a moment ago, look, if you, if you miss doing it one day, it's okay. Tomorrow's a new day, pick it up again. And I think it's important to know too, it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be something that you like, sit down and meditate for an hour. Look, we're busy people, right? If you only want, if you only want to do the one 15 minute thing at night before you go to bed, which is the the kind of powerhouse, as far as I'm concerned of doing any, any kind of mindset is to do it at that time. If that's all you can manage to get into your schedule, perfect. Do that. You know, if you don't have time for the rest, that's okay. If you say to yourself, Oh, I like this idea of sprinkling it throughout the day. And you have a couple days where life just happens and the baby's vomiting and you know, the husband's flying out of town, like, and things, and you miss a day or two, it's okay, That's right. right? Get back to the gym, right? Get back to your mindset work. Just because we stumble for a day or two doesn't mean suddenly all that work is gone. It just means, whoa, life got the better of me the last couple of days. Let me get back to it, right? right. Um, I think that's very, very important because I think we're, again, so motivated and all that that we feel like, dang, I messed it up. When we put that, like you say, the pressure around it, it's not going to work because it's so much about how the feelings that we're feeling as we're doing the mindset work, that's the energy. That's the energetic work that we want to stay connected with. And if we put guilt around it, if we've missed it for a couple of days, it just kind of, the whole thing sort of disintegrates. You know what I mean? We don't want that. We just kind of go, 
give myself grace, going to pick it back up tomorrow because I love it and it feels good and we're going to keep going. I love that. And I think that that's a beautiful note to end on because you know, you've given us so many insights and nuggets. And then this last one, I think is like the biggest of them all. Like you can take all of this stuff, but if you give yourself too much pressure, you're going to crush under it. Right. And so giving yourself grace to learn this and to practice this and make this a lifestyle change, you know, that is where you're going to start seeing success come in. You're going to start seeing the clients roll in and the income and then the impact and all of those things culminate. And for me and many of my clients, like that is our version of success. Having yeah. that income, right? That's important. It's essential for life, but also the impact because everyone I know is in it for more than just the dollars. And yep. I love that. So, um, so I know that you have another mindset training coming up here soon. Can you tell us a little bit about what that's going to be? I do. And <clears throat> this is a fun one because it impacts so many of us. And I actually, I had done a poll in my group and this was the number one choice in my group and it's money mindset. Ooh. Money, mindset. Ooh, money, money, money mindset. Um, because it is, I think it's so big for so many of us, right? And we have blocks in such a variety of ways when it comes to money. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to be working on that. It'll be sometime in July. I haven't quite set the dates yet, um, but it'll be a three day training. I find five days tends to be a little too much for people. So I kind of do it in three days and we're going to jump that. in and really just get on that money mindset to, to help you learn how to shift it because, and what I, you know, what I like to do with anybody in my group or the clients I work with is to give you guys the tools, right? Because yes, I would like to keep working with my clients forever, but I don't want clients or people relying on me, right? I'm not giving you what you need. I'm helping you learn what you need. So you can go back to that tool time and time again on your own when you need it and implement it. You know what I mean? So we're going to be doing a lot of that. Perfect. And so that's going to be hosted in your Facebook group, which is called Emerging Empowered Entrepreneurs. And if you're tuning into this podcast or YouTube show, that will be linked somewhere nearby. <laughs> Just keep your eyes open for it. It'll be real close. Um, and so our audience can learn a little bit more about you there in your Facebook group. But what are some other places where you like to hang out in the online space? Yeah. So my group is definitely my sisterhood. I spend the majority of my time there. It, it, people have told me such wonderful things about my group that they love it. It's one of their favorite places. They feel safe there. So that's definitely the best place to come and connect with me. Um, but yeah, I'm on Instagram and it's Emerge Empower. And because Emerge Empowerment wouldn't fit. I don't know. Uh, so I'm only Emerge Empower. So I was like, well, I better stick with that everywhere else. So um, I'm on Pinterest. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter, but I'm not really there much. But yeah, mainly it's Facebook, Instagram, and, and a lot of, uh, of Pinterest as well. I love Pinterest. Perfect. And then you can also find her on her website, emergeempowerment.com. Yep. And so in closing, I always love to ask my guests about um, their favorite inspirational quote, because I'm always looking for some new good ones, as well as books, because I believe leaders are readers. And so can you share with us what your favorite inspirational quote is? Yeah, and I think this one applies, look, in business, in life. If you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Because, again, it comes back to mindset. I think it's from Henry Ford. Um, if all you ever do is say, I can't, I can't, I can't, you won't be able to. If you start saying, well, wait a minute, maybe I can. Perhaps I can. I'm capable of doing this, right? When we at least open ourselves up to that opportunity of it's a possibility, you just wait and see what happens. I think that's a perfect quote for you and your business. It represents you so, so well. And then lastly, do you have a favorite business book and also a favorite fun book to help you know, store and refresh your mind? <laughs> yes. So my, my favorite book, and I, this is actually one I send to my clients when, we, when they first you know, kind of hire me, um, is The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy, um, because it's it really just, again, it's back to the scientific proof of how powerful this is and how much we can put our brain to work for us mm -hmm. if we just learn how to do it. All we need to do is learn how to do it and practice, 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 and we can help our brain change our lives. Um, so that's my, my big one. And then my fun one, and I, I think when I answered the question, I was like, well, 
I'm not sure how fun this one is because I cry every time. Even when I watch the movie, I cry at the end. And I'm like, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> the notebook. Oh, that's the awesome. notebook. Just, I'm a hopeless romantic and it gets me every time. <laughs> Awesome. Those are great recommendations and those will also be linked nearby. Thank you so much, Debbie, for everything that you shared with our community. I know that they got so much out of it. Even I got so much out of it. So thank Yay, you. So good. Well, you are very welcome. It was a delight and a pleasure and a total honor to be here. I'm, I'm very, very pleased that we got together and did this. So thank you. Absolutely. That's it for this round of the Brittany Rossi show. I hope you'll tune in for the next one. Bye guys. Bye. If you would like to find additional resources or workbooks that were mentioned in this podcast, just head on over to BrittanyRossi.com forward slash podcast, where you can find all the episode details and show notes.